Welcome to the Fuel Podcast, where we explore the foundations under extraordinary lives. The Fuel Podcast is sponsored by the Christopher Schwartz team at First Choice Mortgage Advisors. NMLS ID 106583. If you're looking to purchase or refinance your mortgage, make the Christopher Schwartz team at First Choice Mortgage your first choice. And now, here is your host, Chris Schwartz. What's up, everybody? It's Chris Schwartz, your host of Fuel, and we are here today with our guest, Jonathan Fink. Jonathan, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Chris? I'm doing well. All right. Hanging in there. It's Friday. So. Yes, it is. Uh, so Jonathan comes to us. Um, he is the, the principal agent with the Jonathan Fink Group here at Compass Real Estate in Philadelphia. So uh, he is also a member of the Philly Pops and plays the cello with the Philly Pops. And he is a proud father, right. husband, and also flies some airplanes. So. Well, one mostly. Okay, one mostly. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, we're going to you know, just talk to Jonathan about some of the stuff that he's doing and uh, ha- have you just you know, share some, some stuff with our listeners here um, about what you do. And you, know, there, you have a lot of things going on. We were just ho- talking before the show. Um, yeah. Probably too much. <laughs> I think we, we all we all do. Um, but, you know, so what we do at Fuel is we really try to, you know, talk to people that are doing extraordinary things with, um, you know, with their lives. And that's that's the basis for Fuel and the acronym Foundations Under Extraordinary Lives. So um, I know you're doing some great things with your real estate business. Uh, I also want to talk about some of the stuff that you're doing. Um, you know, just to kind of give back and, and uh, some of the stuff that you're doing with the flights. Sure. So, um, you know, as, as we kind of get into it, uh, the, the leading question I always have is, you know, what, what's your fuel story? You know, what, what drives you and, and what's, your, what's your passion for doing what you do? Well, it's, it's interesting because I, you know, I, I'm very excited to get up in the morning. Sometimes I can't sleep, in fact, which is kind of bizarre. <laughs> but... Um, I really, I get a lot of satisfaction out of some of the things that I do in my life. I mean, I really enjoy selling real estate and helping people with that. It's a lot of fun. Um, There can be some, we were talking about this, there can be some anxiety with it, um, but, um, and some stress. Um, But the the outcomes, I think, can be really dramatic. And and, um, just watching how people are, you know, satisfied or, you know, um, you know, they, they, they sometimes don't think these things are going to happen. I mean, I had one that settled yesterday where she she sold her house. She made an offer on a house contingent on sale of her house. And when, when I initially talked to her, she was like, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know. Can we really actually do this? And I was like, oh yeah, absolutely. And then yesterday (laughs) she was like, yeah, we actually did it, you know? Yeah. So I like that. I like that kind of challenge. Um, and, um, so I like to get up in the morning and do that kind of thing. You know, I like to challenge myself. Um, I like to, to be a little bit nervous. I like to be a little bit scared, even uncomfortable. You know, uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and try to get through to the other side of it. Um, and you know, I think that supporting my family and my kids is probably my biggest motivator in mm-hmm. terms of money. Sure. In terms of earning money. Yeah. Um, and being a provider is really important to me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you have three. I have two kids who two are kids, both in college at the same time. So, oh, that so sounds expensive. <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, yeah, it's not at all. Um, so, so yeah, that's you know that's that's why I get up. That's your why primarily. Yeah, yep. that's the biggest reason. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, to have fun and to and to support that crew. That crew, yeah, nice. yeah, and uh, where were they in college? What what years? Uh, my they? son, um, my son is is autistic. He's mildly autistic, and he's at Drexel. Okay, um, and so that's always a challenge. Um, just helping him navigate through college has been uh, the biggest challenge we've had, I think, with him in in a bunch of years. It's a completely mm-hmm. different system. And it's much harder than the school that he's been doing in the past. Sure. Um, and then my daughter, he's been doing that for two years now. My daughter is uh, just started in Chicago at University of, wait, it's called Roosevelt University, Chicago College of Performing Arts. And she's a musical theater um, major with a dance concentration. Okay. So she just got home from her first 
semester away. Nice. And that's, you know, definitely have to, have to give you, uh, you know, some anxiety and some, you know, fear with the, Oh yeah. yeah I mean, it's your... a lot. It's absolutely a lot, but, um, it's a great joy to be able to provide that for them, you know, sure. and, um, and that, that, that's something I've always dreamed about being able to do. I'd like my kids to get, to come out of college debt free. Um, which and, is you know, a feat in and of itself in this, yeah, it's pretty in this ridiculous these day and days. age. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, yeah, that's, I mean, from a financial standpoint, like that's kind of like what drives me to get up and, and, sure. and work really hard is to support them. Um, the other stuff is kind of the fun stuff, you know, playing music mm -hmm. for me, um, is, I, I mean, we still earn money doing it. It's not, we don't do it for free, Sure. but, um, you know, and, but for me, it's, it's also a, a social outlet. Um, mm -hmm. and there's a certain amount of prospecting that goes on when I go to jobs because I do work with a lot of musicians. Sure. And so. Um, I do need to continue to, to network with those folks and, and talk to them. And so a lot of those conversations will happen at, at rehearsals or even on stage or backstage, you know, you <laughs> never, you kind of never know. Right. So um, if, you're, if you're at the Philly Pops holiday show, you may, you may see Jonathan on stage, uh, <laughs> you know, well, you will see me on stage. I mean, I won't, I won't and, uh, be, yeah, hopefully and, uh, <laughs> trying know. to sell houses. Right. You know, <laughs> I've been, uh, all these years that I've been in real estate when I first started, kind of prospecting to other musicians, um, I came up with the idea of putting my business information on a pencil and classical musicians use pencils all the time and we notoriously never have them. <laughs> Go figure. So, um, I, you know, I, I thought, well, I'll just make a bunch of pencils up that say Jonathan Fink and my phone number on them and I'll put them on people's stands. And so the John Fink pencil was born oh, nice. and, uh, you know, I, that's something I still do. In fact, after moving to Compass, I just ordered, I just actually got my first box of new nice. black and white Compass John Fink pencils, which will be appearing on stands soon. Oh, okay. So. Keep your eyes out. So, yeah. and, I, and I suspect, hopefully, you have an extra one floating around for us here. <laughs> I actually don't. But <laughs> oh, I, my goodness. Because, like, you know, I don't have them yet, but, host. But, I, but I will. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's I promise okay. I'll send you one. <laughs> um, but uh, so, and that's, you know, the, the nice thing about what, you know, where you're able to do in, in, in real estate is cause that's your, that's your career, right? That's, that's right. how you take care of the, the family and, and provide for the crew. Right. But you know, I like to, to sit down and talk with people that are not, you know, nothing wrong with it, but, um, you know, that aren't completely one dimensional mm -hmm. and there are some people that are just whatever their career is and they're laser focused and that's, you know, right. 24 seven. And there's, you know, I said nothing wrong. I with wish it. I could be more laser focused <laughs> yeah, yeah, on my yeah. career, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> my but, business coach also would be very happy if I were, <laughs> were a little bit more laser focused, but the reality is that I have other things in my life. But I want to enjoy do. Yeah, yeah. you know, that you're, that you're passionate and, about. And, and if I'm honest, one of the reasons that I wasn't, that I wasn't more successful as a musician, I mean, that I didn't, you know, that I didn't win like a big orchestra job somewhere was that I, I always had other things that I was interested in. And so yeah. I, you know, focus has been, I can be extremely focused for shorter periods of time, but, but not on the same thing for days and days and days. Right. Or for yeah, hours and hours and hours. I start to, I start to lose it. And, um, I mean, to me, it's always, I've, that's been a negative in my life, not a positive. Right. So See, I'm of, looking at, yeah. yeah I'm, people, I'm, some people look at it that like, oh, he's so diversified. He does it. And I'm like, oh, you know, it'd be good if you could just like concentrate on one thing it. and really get good at it. You yeah. Know? Well. Um, so anyway, but yeah, I do have other things in my life that I'm interested. Aviation is something I've been interested in my whole life. My father, um, when I was a kid, um, was very into building model competitive model airplanes okay. so that f flew and so i did some of that um and that's how i kind of learned about aviation got kind of the aviation bug okay um and i've always loved airplanes and i and i i always say there are people who love airplanes and there are people who fly airplanes and they're they're a little bit different um okay. Interesting. there are you will talk to, you can talk to people who are professional pilots who don't give 
at, you know, they don't, they don't, <laughs> we're free flowing here. They right? don't, they don't give a shit about yeah, airplanes yeah. and you could show them a beautiful 1947 Beechcraft Bonanza and they wouldn't know what it was or wouldn't care. Care less. You know, it's a job. They show up, they strap in, they, they, they fly, fly you know, they fly planes. Right. Um, but then there are people who love airplanes and I'm in that category, you know, so, um, you know, my whole life I, you know, w- would go, you know, I go out of my way to go to an airport you know, to just sit there and watch airplanes take off and land and look at airplanes. And it's just been a part of my, you know, a part of me my whole life kind of thing. So, nice. um, and with some of the financial success that comes with, with real estate, I was able to actually own an airplane of my own, which is, was always a dream of mine. I mean, I've been flying for a long, long time, but always in clubs, or um, in, in sure. partnerships sure or, you know, by the grace of, of friends who would let me fly their airplanes. People would uh, let you fly their airplanes, yeah, John? Yeah, crazy, <laughs> I know. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, no, really. <laughs> but, um, you know, I got kind of to a point where I was like, well, if I'm going to do this, I should do it. Um, and so a few years ago, I was able to purchase, a, a, I think, a really beautiful airplane, 1960 um, Beechcraft Bonanza. It's kind of a restored antique. It's... it's when I was shopping for an airplane, I said to my friend, look, it's got to be something pretty because I, you know, I like to look at things, yeah, you know, nice. like I want to be able to go to the airport and just, you know, just look at it and polish it. And, right. you know, and sometimes I do, you know, sometimes at the end of the day, I just go out there and I don't actually fly. I just, you know, just kind of walk around in the hangar talking on the phone instead of talking on my phone in the office or whatever. And it, it gives me a great, it gives me a lot of joy. You know, it really does. Yeah, so. I, I can imagine. And that's, um, you know, part of, too, especially being in real estate, because, uh, you know, I'm on the other side, I'm on the lending side, but it's, uh, you know, it, you know, we're, our businesses complement each other. So right. we kind of know the, you know, the demand that it, pu- it puts on you. And Yeah, it can. And, and, it can be know, very demanding, right? And, and, yeah, absolutely. And your, and your family. So to have that outlet, to just be able to, you know, go out and polish the plane or just to decompress. It's right. got it. You almost need something. I mean, I don't know if you need an airplane, but probably no, cool. I mean, but, I mean you know, maybe you don't. Th- that. You're right. So everybody needs to have something yeah. where you turn your phone off and you don't think about anything else, even if it's only for an hour. I have, I have two things in my life that I do where I don't, my phone's not on and I'm not looking at it. One is fly my airplane okay. and the other is work out. Okay. And when I work out, I put my phone in my locker and I don't look at it for the entire hour. And I find that that's, you know, as connected as we are with those damn things, sure. you know, if you can't put them down for an hour here or an hour there, you're going to go crazy. Yeah. No, I, it's just. And um, so, yeah, what, I mean, there are lots of days where if it's a nice day, I'll go out to the airport at the end of the day and I'll just get on my plane and I have a little route that I do that goes kind of goes up the, the Delaware river. Um, you know, just kind of follows the river up to close to Allentown. And then I kind of just loop around and come back. Yeah. It takes about 20 minutes. It's beautiful. And I haven't thought about my problems. Sure. And you just and you're up there. I land and I put it away and I go, okay, well, there you go. You know, that's awesome. So, yeah. I mean, I think everybody should have something that they can do. To just that, unplug, that, disconnect, yeah, they disconnect a little bit. So that's kind of what that does for me. Yeah, and and you're you do some some pretty cool things too with the plane because I you know been following you on social, right? See right. some of the stuff that you're doing. Um, so you recently got into you know yeah, doing, I can doing talk some about rescue, that a little bit. some rescue I mean, stuff. It's pretty awesome. I want to make it clear that a lot, lots and lots of that's called general aviation, the kind of flying that I do, piston, um, small piston, light light piston aircraft. Um, either singles or twins. That's called general aviation. It's kind of the category. And lots and lots of general aviation pilots do charity flying. Okay. And um, lots of them do way more than I do. Um, okay. And we all should do it. You know, I think anybody, in my opinion, anybody who has, who owns their own airplane or can has access to an airplane should do some kind of charity flying. I think it's, I think it's kind of incumbent upon that's probably not the right word it's 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 a thing people should do if they have that opportunity um in my opinion in our country we have great privileges to be able to own our own airplanes and to fly them pretty much anywhere we want without restrictions yes there are rules and some of them are very important and stringent rules but assuming you follow them 
there's nowhere in our country you can't fly your own airplane. Right, which is And amazing. there are no, literally almost no other countries like that. Um, and so it's a, an incredible privilege. I mean, uh, I'll quote one of my friends, Mark, who often will say when we're out flying, can you believe they let us do this? <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, it's, sometimes it really feels that way. Um, it's, like, it's, it's just a real privilege to be able to do it. And I think you, I think you really need to give back because there are people who can't get from, you know, I mean, the common use for Angel Flight, which is Angel Flight or PALS are the two organizations that fly, I fly people with, um, Patient Airlift Services and Angel Flight East, um, they connect pilots who are willing with patients who need transport to kind of regular treatments. So you get somebody who lives in, say, Poughkeepsie, who's coming to Penn for cancer treatments on a regular basis. That might go on for two years. Right. And they can't necessarily afford to take the airlines. And also, sometimes those folks have compromised immune systems or, you know, going on an airline is just not practical for other reasons. And so general aviation pilots make those flights completely for free. We don't get reimbursed for gas at all. It's just a, a, a flying awesome. mitzvah, basically. Um, so, you know, I do that stuff because, it, frankly, selfishly, it feels good. You know, yeah, like, like absolutely. I, just... I sometimes struggle to, you know, with my own self-esteem about feeling good about myself. So if I do something nice like that, yeah. then I feel good at the end of the day. And it's so, you know, it's yeah. like a little, a little it, bit of a drug. You yeah. Know? And you're, you're doing, you know, an, an yeah. amazing thing. And that's for the, for, you know, our listeners out there, you know, that's, you know, something to really think about and explore if, if you're not doing something, you know, honestly, I, I, when I walked in here, you know, I, I just, you know, parked my car, gave the keys to the, to the, you know, in the parking garage. And, you know, I'm just, I'm just walking through the city and, you know, to get here to the building. And, you know, I walk past the guy and, he, and he's just laying right. there on the street with a sign, you know, homeless, you know, right. ha happy holidays, anything that can help. And immediately I just thought, you know, look at all. There's all, so all the much wealth. suffering. I'm, I'm looking at, yeah. you know, he's next to a Starbucks, which is like the biggest, you know, group right. China. we're all in there with our, you know, grande triple, you yep. know, ten yep. ten dollar latte. And here's this man just just laying on the ground outside with a sign. And, and it. You know, I just and we all see it every day, right? Yeah. We all see it every day, and the dichotomy between the amount of money, frankly, that most of us are earning, and and the amount of suffering going on, the contrast between the two is staggering. It, it really and, is, and, and you know, all of us. I mean, anybody can do these things. I mean, um, frankly, it's more fun if you have an airplane and you can, you know, fly <laughs> people. <laughs> sure. Um, but there are all kinds of ways to volunteer and lots of people do that stuff. It's just, you know, I mean, that's why I, it feels a little funny to take a lot of attention. I mean, the, the, fa the fact that it's an airplane gives it a little bit of a, yeah, you know, wow well, well factor. It's a, little. a, it's a double edged sword because when airplanes crash, it also gets a lot of attention, sure. which we don't, we're not so crazy about, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, there's lots of people who are doing all kinds of really important volunteer work. And, and I think everybody, I think everybody should. I mean, I, you know, it, absolutely. I don't know yeah. why you wouldn't, if for no other reason than, like I said, it feels so good. It's like, sure. it's like a, it just, you know, you do something nice for somebody. And um, I mean, to me, it just, it makes it worth, it kind of makes it worth the hard work. Like, you know, yeah, it makes and, I, and I kind of thrive on the positive feedback that I get from it. I'm not I'm not embarrassed to say that, like, social media has been a good thing for me over the last 10 or however many years it's been around. Sure. Because I like that. I yeah. like to post a picture of myself doing something good and then see people say nice things about it. I'm yeah. a high eye. I don't know if you're a yeah, disc, disc guy, yeah. but yeah, I mean, us high eyes, we need yeah, to we be need told that interaction. We need, we need to that, be told that yeah, we're liked we a lot. Otherwise it's, <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it's all bad, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so I do care what people think and I want people to think good things about me. And I, you know, I'm not bragging about that. I don't think it's a particularly great trait, but it's the, it, right. we're yeah. being honest. Yeah, that, we're being honest. I there, love it. Yeah, there's I mean, a lot, there's a lot to, that helps me feel good about myself. And when I feel good about myself, I, I do more business. I mean, I just do when I'm more mm -hmm. positive and feeling good about myself. Yeah. Every, right. it kind of, everything flows. You so know that's what I mean? almost, you know, to, to kind of tie it in, that's a little bit of, of your fuel as well. I know we talked Absolutely. about, you know, yeah. and, um, you know. being positive 
which can be a real struggle for me. I have to be honest with you. I can very easily become very negative. Okay. So being positive is super, super important for me. I have to stay positive in order to do the business that I need to do to support my family. Yeah. And these other things that we're talking about are important for me in order to stay positive. Yeah. And so it all kind of has to, it all kind of has to flow in order for you to, yeah. And, and sometimes it doesn't, sometimes the flow stops and that's not good. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's the idea. And that's, it's taken me years and years and years to, to kind of work all that out. And, uh, I'm grateful that I have, you know, to a certain extent. Yeah. And still have a lot. I still have a lot of growing to do and a lot of, of you know, yeah, I think, I think we all, all people like us need to, yeah, it doesn't I stop. Mean, Unfortunately, you, you, it's like, okay. You yeah, it keep keeps going, going and going. you have to keep kind of figuring out how to make yourself better. I think that's the, yeah, that's the real key. Yeah. And, I, and I see that, um, you, you know, as I, again, social media is a great thing. I, you know, follow you and I see that you get a lot of, um, you and your son, Ben, mm -hmm. I, I see the relationship and you know, how you kind of get your fuel from, from that. Mm -hmm. I, I just follow, I follow along and I, 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 you know, watch right. it, listen, whatever. And right. it's just like, wow. And I, and I imagine that at times, you know, there's, you know, challenges that come, oh my God. come with, with that, <laughs> that you're, and, and I don't imagine I watch them and I'm yeah, like, you know, it could be very frustrating. You know, we yeah. just went through this thing, which a lot of people saw in social media where he's taking this anatomy, you know, and, and I'm helping him study. And it's really clear that he has read this stuff and he's got all this stuff kind of flowing around in his head. But yeah. then when it comes to pulling it out, it can be really a challenge for him. And it's hard. It, it's real. It can be really sad to watch. It's like, you know, like I know it's in there. Right. You know, I, I just need you to slow down and kind of, but I can't take the test for him, sure, you know, right. and, and at the end of the day, you know, he, he got a 68 on this test. Um, and you know what, that's up about 10 points from the last test he got. And this is what college has been like, you know, it's, it's a, it's a challenge for him, but he's up for it. He's, he, nothing stops this kid. Yeah. He's just like, oh, I can do this dad. I know I can do it, you know, and. And then sometimes he comes home and it's like, well, I got a D. <laughs> okay, well, you know. But he's, so, he's doing it. Yeah, you know? he, he keeps he, going. He yeah, nothing going. stops him. It's, it's amazing. So, um, and I think that's, that's important too. Persistence in business is huge. Yeah. I mean, I, I've said to a couple of young agents, like, you know, you can either quit or succeed. I mean, I, mean, I, I think that if you stay with it long enough, it, this kind of stuff, you'll get good enough at it. Sure. Uh, if you quit, you won't. You yeah. Know. And that's with it's that simple with anything, you know, yeah, with it, anything, it, with anything yeah. in life, you know, you, you stick with it and uh, you know, so it, it's, it's great. I mean, for, for our listeners out there, you know, I know people have, you know, challenges and struggles and sometimes want to quit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to just, you know, let them know. We hey. all have struggles. Yeah. I mean, right. We, yeah. No, <laughs> I, I make a point of, of not posting negative things on f social media. Yep. I don't think people go on social media to see me say, Oh my God, I can't believe, you know, I got three parking tickets and a blah, blah, blah. Right. That doesn't mean those things aren't happening. Yep. Absolutely. You know, I mean, th there are frustrations with living life that lives that we live running around and being in the city that are, that are frustrating. Mm -hmm. I just, I just don't think people, I mean, uh, social media is a huge part of our lives. Right. We can all pretend it isn't, but it yeah. is. And yep. I just don't need to see that, yeah. you know, and I don't think other people are, I yeah, go on social media because I want to be, with, yeah, you know? I, want, like, I go on social media because I want to be inspired. Yep. Exactly. You know, I want to be inspired by something somebody's doing mm -hmm. and, and, or, or congratulate somebody on something that, uh, something good that happened in their lives. Yep. Um, so I try to keep the negative stuff off yeah. as much as I can. And, and you know, I, I've noticed over the years as I've started to kind of level up the, the people that I surround myself with the difference, you know, in, in what I see in my news feed compared to, you know, maybe talking to someone else or like, Oh, you see all this John, like, well, no. block it, just I'm turn like, it no, off. I, I mean, I, you don't, you don't like it. what you don't like. It doesn't make you feel good when you look at it. Yeah. I mean, social media gets a hard rap because, because, but the fact is we all look at it, you know, we're looking at it and what is it you're trying to get out of it? 
you know, when you look, when you, when you open up your Facebook feed or your Instagram yeah, you feed, you want to feel good. You want to feel good. Yeah, right? Like what's something. the point of looking at that and not feeling good? Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't know. get that. I can look at my parking ticket and not, feel, not feel good. good. Right. <laughs> I can look at, there's lots of things I can look at and not feel good. I don't need, I don't need that from social media. I don't need it from the people around me. Yeah. Uh, I try to surround myself with people who, who stay positive. Yeah. Um, and, and are, are trying to improve themselves and are trying to, you know, succeed at a high level. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, and you've just made the, the transition, you know, to compass, you know, part, a big part of the reason was uh, what's going on here. The level of the agents, um, I'm surrounded by people who are doing way more business than I am sure. at a super high level. And it's, and, and it's great to be able to collaborate with them. I'm very excited about that. I will say though, in you know, I learned a lot of this stuff we've been talking about, this um, mm-hmm. positive thinking stuff. I learned a lot of it at Keller Williams, and okay. I still think a lot of that of that model and that brand. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of this positive. The first time I was ever exposed to this positive thinking stuff was during Bold, doing Bold at Keller Williams. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, I still think for new agents who are who are starting out, I still think Keller Williams is a great. I mean, look, if you're a brand new agent, unless you're joining a team, you're not joining Compass. They right. have yeah. they have you Stand. know limits. Yeah. Um, so Keller Williams is a great place to go and their training is, is excellent. And I owe a lot of this, of my success to the stuff that I learned there. I don't uh, have uh, any problem saying that with my compass shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. No, we all, you know, go through these evolutions and, yeah. and growth. And, uh, you know, one of my coaches always, you know, something that stuck with me was, you know, he said, Hey, look, you know, the team that took you from, you know, five to six deals is, you know, maybe not the team that's going to take you to that 10 to 15 that's deals. right right and that's a hard thing to face when the team that took you to the five to six deals is your crew you know right. it's your people right. um but sometimes you just grow and and you know but there doesn't you know yeah it doesn't mean that uh you weren't supposed to be there and you didn't get yeah a lot exactly from it. Uh, i have i yeah you know, so I'm thrilled to have been there for 10 years and i think it's a great company Awesome. And I think this is a great company and it's exciting to be kind of in, you know, in the beginning stages of something oh, yeah, that's absolutely. so different and so, uh, you know, it's yeah. so modern and um, it has that New York um, feel about it, which I really love. You know, it's got yeah. kind of a... It's got like city chic. It's got, kinda, yeah, it's yeah, a little, know? yeah. I struggle <laughs> to keep up with... Uh, <laughs> with my my colleagues, you know, I'm not I'm not, not nearly dressy. Is that even like a is yeah, that I'm, even a wear anymore? That's yeah, probably no. not. I live in Fishtown. I'm I'm no longer you know I'm not hip enough for my neighborhood anymore. So you know, <laughs> uh, but that's that's another struggle. Nice, that's awesome. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for uh you know for taking the time to to share your fuel story with us and and to sit down and at, this is kind of the the uh, point where we're gonna hit you with a little rapid fire. Okay. Uh, so it's it's a, a pretty fun exercise we just like to uh, throw at you. Okay. And it goes like this: you're you're stuck on an island. Uh huh. Um. So I don't, don't want to say maybe the plane went down. Oh but, god. Uh, okay. That's okay. <laughs> no, but like in a nice way. Like it was okay. a touchdown. Landing, okay. But it's not going back up. Okay. Um. So you're stuck on an island, and um, we're gonna throw the disclaimer out there. Of course, we know you would take your family and friends. Yeah. Okay. Um. So they're there. So beyond that. Beyond that. Okay. Uh, one person. And it could be a celebrity, it could be anybody, it could be somebody that's had an influence in your life. Who would you take with you? Oh my goodness, a person, and it can't be my family. Well, we're going to assume that, like, of course, yeah, we're, of we're course assuming, we're assuming yeah. that the family is there. Yeah. Um. Oh, I I can't give you a rapid fire <laughs> answer to that. It's okay. it's too difficult. Um, probably my close friend, Mark, who I talk to every day. Okay. So yeah. Mark, Mark's coming with you. Yeah. I don't know. He's probably really upset about that. But. <laughs> He's like, damn, Jonathan, <laughs> thanks a lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, and the second one, um, what's a book that, that you've read that, that has had an impact on your life that you'd like to share with our listeners? Um, I have read, uh, I read a lot of Louise, um, I want to get her name right. I think it's Louise Hay. Okay. Um, who is, who does, I might've gotten that name wrong, but she does a lot of these like positive thinking books. Okay. And she also has, um, um, some podcasts and stuff. It's really goofy. <laughs> okay. Really, really woo woo goofy stuff. But, but a couple of them I read really did change my life. So, awesome. uh, and when I'm not, when things aren't clicking on all, all cylinders, I pull some of those books out and read them again or listen to them. So nice. Probably that. All right. 
And the last one, what, what food? What do you have to have on the island? What's your guilty pleasure? What's your health food? What, what are you I, I love seafood. So if it's, you know, so I probably would cure myself of that if, uh, um, <laughs> if I was on an island. But yeah, I love, I love shellfish and sushi <laughs> and, and food, from, uh, food from other countries. Awesome. So you're in the perfect place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fish town. Yeah, right. <laughs> we have more restaurants than any neighbor, any neighborhood in the city anymore. Yeah. Nice. Um, all right. Well, um, so if, if people want to connect with you, um, you know, learn more about what you're doing, uh, need to have some real estate needs or, you know, want to learn about th- some of the other stuff that you're doing. Right. How can they find you? Um, well, you can, Facebook is as good a way as any. Um, sure. you find me on Facebook, just put my name in, um, send me a message. You can call me on the phone or text me. Okay. Um, Check you out on. And uh, and I have a website as well, which I'm sure we'll put in the in the show notes. But yep. Yeah, I mean, I I love talking to people, um, especially about real estate mm-hmm. and um, of course and flying. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, and so you know, yeah, happy to talk to anybody and and uh, always looking for more people to help. Of course. Awesome. All right. Well. Everybody, thanks for listening, tuning in to this episode of Fuel. Uh, We'd ask if you enjoyed it to share it with some friends, family, share it out there on social, give us a five-star rating on iTunes. And on that note, we're out.